God to say you cannot speak by the Spirit and get along with the carnal mind. You can't speak by the Spirit, come on somebody, and achieve harmony with that that's of the dark, that's of the devil. Anybody hear Holy Spirit? And the Spirit speaketh expressly in the latter times. Some I'll say these latter times. That many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Listen, they speak in all lies and hypocrisy. First Timothy chapter four, verse one and two. Somebody say the Holy Ghost speaks expressly to the point. Somebody say those that's in the spirit ain't beating around the bush. They find God in the bush just like Moses did in Exodus 3. <laughs> he speaks expressly. Somebody straight to the point. Straight, straight, straight to the point. He ain't beating around about it. Amen. And listen what he teaches. He said many in the latter times are going to depart. Sounds like the crowds are going to depart. They're going to depart from the faith. And somebody say they'll give heed. That means they'll listen to seducing spirits. That's the soothsaying spirit. The gospel that's just about me and what God's going to do for me. It has nothing to do about my service to God. It's almost like God becomes a graven image in people in the hour we live in the latter times that are departing from the faith, but yet they still say, and I believe. Come on. They're, they've they've committed the, you know, the breaking of the second of the Ten Commandments found in Exodus 20 verses 4. Thou shalt have, you know, a verse 3, make no other God before you that's the first one the second one's kind of like none to it thou shalt not make unto yourself any graven image of God so people begin to make up an image of God a graven image of God it's idolatry and they begin to present that as they're preaching the gospel amen and their approach to God amen is really not the God of the Bible it's the God they've made up amen it's the God the image of God that serves them not them that serves God some ought to say that's a false image of God. And many live by that. They're not in the spirit. They gave heed to a seducing spirit, a doctrine of demons. And that's all the presentation of the preaching of the word of God is about, is what God's going to do for me. It's always about me, always about me. Amen. And it's almost like they're looking for a God that serves them instead of looking for the God to serve. Amen. Praise God. Somebody shout, God ain't serving us. We're supposed to be serving him. That's biblical order. But these end times, these latter times, these doctrines of demons, that's what they make the gospel sound like. It's all geared to fit and suit the people for what God's going to do for them. But there's nothing. In other words, this graven image of God, it'll preach to you about Christ and his cross, and it'll tell you how much he loved you. And that's the truth. But then it won't tell you to repent. It won't tell you to turn away from your sin. And it sure won't tell you like Jesus preached, repent and believe the gospel, Mark 1, 15. It sure won't tell you like Jesus preached and told them, if any man's going to come to me, let him take up his cross daily and deny himself and follow me, Luke 9, 23. It'll tell you about Jesus' cross, but it won't tell you that you've got to take up one too. It'll tell you Jesus died for you, but it will not present that you've got to die for him. You got to leave you. Come on, you got to give you up to follow him. Because that's how Jesus preached it. So this new age, this latter time false doctrine, these, these teachings that the Holy Spirit expressly just to the point, and he's doing it right now through my mouth. Amen. He speaks about these in warning how people are going to depart from the faith. Didn't say they'd stop doing religious activities. Didn't even say some of them would stop going to church. Lot do. Amen. Glory to God. But they make up a graven image of God. They make up a God that agrees with them instead of them agreeing with God. We, we make up a God that suits our fancy, so to speak, that suits our life, that suits our opinions, that suits our schedules. Amen. And we make up that graven image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Instead of God you know, we serving him, it becomes all about God serving us. Now, they're not going to tell you that's what's going on, but that's exactly what's happening. Somebody say they've made a graven image of God. It's idolatry. 
It's disguised as faith in God, but it's idolatry because it's always about God doing something for you. Never nothing, nothing sacrificially, nothing you supposed to do, amen, for him. There's, there's nothing for you to do, they say. Nothing for you to do. Now look, there's nothing that can be done by us, amen, for us to gain salvation. Jesus paid it all. It's finished, John 19, verses 30. But somebody shout after you've come to the cross. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, come to me. Somebody say, that's the invitation. And he said, if any man comes to me, here's what's got to happen after he comes to me. And a lot of this superficial, shallow, new age, latter time presentation of the gospel, it only presents come to me. Come to me. But Jesus didn't stop there. When you come to me, he said, then I require of you to deny yourself and then follow me. So Jesus said, you can come to me and still not follow me. And that's what's going on. A lot of people come to him, but they don't follow him, Brother Danny. They don't follow him because if it's inconvenient, amen, glory to God, if, it, if something gets in the way of their usual or their norm or their convenience or their comfort, they can't be obedient to God. Why? Because they came to him, but they don't know how to follow him because they've not learned to deny themselves. They've not learned to die to themselves. This new age gospel, amen, praise God, that presents to us an, an idolatry form a man of the presentation of the message makes a graven image of God breaking the second of the Ten Commandments like we said because it's about God serving us us not not us serving God amen anybody here Holy Spirit and I didn't plan to preach all that but the Holy Ghost did and I just learned to follow him because I'm dead to me praise God I ain't I ain't here to, if y'all ain't figured it out by now I don't preach to become popular because that ain't what happens with Marvin Booth Hallelujah. So the more I open my mouth, the later the days get and the later the times get. Before Jesus comes, the more I make mad. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, the living truth. Amen. Somebody say, we serve God. God don't serve us. Any message, presentation that makes it seem the other way around, these are some of these doctrines of devils that are preached and taught by seducing spirits. It causes man's heart to be seared with a hot iron. Some might say branded. Yeah. Amen. It's like a hot iron, he said, and they speak lies and all hypocrisy. So it causes them to speak things. Oh, I believe, but then they don't believe what they say they believe. So it causes them to live like a hypocrite, a pretender, a stage player. It's a make-believe faith. Amen. So some might say the spirit's going to speak expressly. 1 Timothy 4 verses 1, in the latter times, and he says, many shall give heed unto doctrines of devil. Some might say the crowds. Yeah, so you better not be following crowds. God warns the crowds are ones that's going to be following seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Oh, it must be God. There's a crowd in it. Mm -mm, the cults has got plenty of crowds. Come on, the world, have you not stopped and looked? It's got plenty of crowds. Somebody say, you better not follow the crowds. You better follow Christ. Because the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the crowds are going to be the one that are deceived by the masses. Matthew 24 and verses 10, the Bible said, many shall be offended. Verses 11 says, many shall be deceived and many shall follow after the false prophets. Some might say many. The crowds, therefore, again, Jesus is speaking in reference to his second coming, him coming again. He said, there's going to be deception like you have never known. Amen. Glory to God. And he said, many. That means the crowds. So everybody shout with me. In the latter times, the crowds, the masses will be deceived. Hallelujah. Don't follow crowds. You better follow the word of Christ. Don't follow what's popular. That's why Paul told Timothy, you better preach this word in season and out of season. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 verses 2 in season and out of season means when it's popular and when it's not. I'm telling you I'm preaching things right now that I preached 32 years ago that I preached 22 years ago. Amen. Glory to God. It would get me booked. It, it would make a popularity come around me but now just the opposite is happening. I, I ain't preaching no different. I may be preaching a lot stronger on things than I ever have but I ain't preaching no new age thing. I ain't preaching no different gospel. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? You can go back. There's archives of our ministry all over the place. Praise God. You can go back and listen to it. Hey man, I may preach, preach a little more blunt and a little stronger and harder. I hope so. Hey man, glory to God than I did when I was younger, but I ain't preaching nothing different. And I'm telling you, I've seen the times. I've been in this thing long enough now. I've seen people when they shouted over what I preach now. Hey man, and I see them now not wanting to hear what I got to say. Hey man, and it's the same thing 
that used to make the church pack out, fill up. Come on, somebody, and people would run to it. They wanted to see it. But I'm telling you, we're in the latter times, and one of the proofs of it is people are scattering. People are wandering away. Amen. They're departing from the faith because they want to make believe. They just want to feel good instead of feel God. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, we're in those times. But somebody say the Spirit is speaking. The Spirit is speaking expressly. Amen. In the latter times. That's 1 Timothy 4 1. So somebody say, the longer the last days become, the more blunt to the point, straight up, is the Holy Spirit going to speak. He don't speak on things that people just want to hear. He speaks more or a lot <laughs> on things they don't want to hear. Amen. That's why the itchy ears, that's the crowds, heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts. 2 Timothy 4 verses 3. Somebody say they find them somebody that'll tell them what they want to hear. The soothsayer becomes the popular. Amen. In the hour we live, that's the latter time. So somebody say don't follow the crowds. Follow the Christ. When Jesus got closer to the cross, the crowds left him. Hello? The closer he got to the cross, the more he preached it. John 6. He had big crowds. Even they were called disciples. But as soon as he started preaching the cross and his death and his resurrection, many of them were offended. Amen? John 6, 60. You know, it was revealed that this was a hard saying. Somebody said it was a hard saying. They didn't. And Jesus asked them, are you offended? The word offend means to apostatize, to apostate, to go away, to fall away. Jesus said, are you going to fall away? Then he asked them the question, amen, glory to God. Will you also go away? John 6, verse 66, I call it the 666 of John. Amen, praise God. Jesus asked them, amen, will you also go away? And that's when Peter opened his big mouth again, old brother, big mouth Peter. Amen. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. He had the right word. Amen. Concerning that. Amen. But even Peter, it got so bad that even Peter denied him. Praise God. But thank God, God restored him back and he wept bitterly. He come back to the Lord. But friend, we're in that hour. There's people you would never thought would depart. There, there's people you'd never thought would walk away. That's why I'm telling you, son, if you live in loose when it comes to following God, you better tighten up. You better straighten up. You better get yourself serious. You better stop putting so many gaps between you and God.